Hello! This is a short update about my Iron Man suit. I was working on the hands, which I have just here. Um, I'm not going to do the last part of the hand video series right now. I'm going to talk about some other things, do some other things, and then come back to the hands after that. So here are the finger and hand parts from the last part of the hand video. So all these parts were 3D printed on my 3D printer. I've made these gloves, which you put on. Which have LED clusters, which are wired. Various rare earth magnets, which are countersunk magnets with holes in. Basically they're super glued on. And then I have a corresponding hand plate with another 3D printed part with um, some washers glued in and that just snaps into place on the magnets. Obviously then the uh, finger parts need fitting onto all the fingers, if I find the correct size. And that makes up the hand segments. So obviously the back of the hand is missing. In fact I have these parts, they need some further work. That's going to be for the back of the hand, um, which of course is joined to the cuff of the suit. So, uh, the next part of the hand video was to um, do a similar thing to the, to the fingers that I've done with the palm, so that you can basically put the glove on and then you can just slot the fingers on in one go, which would mean joining the segments together with something flexible. Um, the, the ultimate aim is that I can have a machine that puts the entire suit on, um, so that Basically, it places these parts on and it places the fingers on your hand. Um, the obvious thing is, though, that you have to put the glove on first, but basically there's still some cool factor in having a machine that suits up your Iron Man suit for you. And I've done a similar thing to the rest of the suit. So there are some other videos in my YouTube channel about this. Um, in fact, there's an entire playlist devoted to the strapping system for the suit. So all of the parts are fixed on again with magnets and these custom made plugs and sockets uh, which I made by um, effectively sculpting, sculpting clay and polyurethane casting um, and then refining by sanding and basically making loads of them so all the pieces fit on. Um, so the, the, again with, as with the hands you have to put on this strapping system first that was made out of dog leads from the dollar store um, Velcro, bits of aluminium strip, bits of plastic and um, the aim as I said before is that um, it's fairly easy to place the pieces on so it'd be easy to make a machine that places the pieces onto the wearer. However, obviously as with the hands you have to put this strapping system on first which is kind of made of bits of metal, it's fairly heavy um, and the plugs and sockets are fairly cumbersome. The exception to this is the, um, effectively the shins and boots. Now there's another whole playlist, or at least three to four videos in my channel about these boots, about testing them and about making the mechanism. What I've done with those is that they're actually one big mechanism which is freestanding. Um, and the pieces come off. Again, we've got these magnetic plugs and sockets and some other various bits made of random hardware. And um, basically, you can take off these Velcro straps This piece opens up, and um, in the foot there we've got a foam shoe that's velcroed in, so you can basically put your foot into this boot, do all of the pieces up, and um, you can walk around it, walk around with it on, um, and basically it holds itself on, so there's no need for any straps to go around the shoulders or be linked to the thigh parts to hold the boots on, um, because basically as you can see, there's a few issues. Basically, you know, they're self-supporting and they're one piece and they stay on your feet when you walk around. So that seemed like a really good idea when I did it. Obviously, it's kind of crude with all these bits of aluminium and the, again, these big printed plugs and sockets with um, magnets on. But, you know, it kind of got me thinking about the way I'd strapped up the rest of the suit. So if you follow my YouTube channel, you know that I bought a 3D printer and I've got various other 3D printed projects on the go, including a human-sized bipedal uh, walking android project. I'm actually printing a part of it here. But obviously 3D printing means you can pretty much produce any part you'd like to make out of plastic. 
So that kind of got me thinking about the Iron Man suit and the underlying exoskeleton strapping system. So now I can produce pretty much any shaped piece of plastic that I like with a 3D printer, um, subject to being able to draw it in CAD, which is pretty easy. Um, I'd quite like to go back to this um, and replace all this metal work, or at least have part metal work, but have much more refined plastic latching mechanisms, maybe using magnets and maybe not. Um, but basically kind of lighter and, you know, more like the real suit. So I'm going to leave the main body, and um, there are straps that go down to the thighs to hold them up, which we can take off as well if I just pull one of these side plates off, and the front of the thigh disengages. Again, I used um, what's called modesty blocks in the UK, which are basically plastic blocks for holding furniture together, um, to hold the thighs together. It's um, rather harder to get back on than it is to get off. And that's held in place again by the magnetic magnetic plugs and sockets. Um, but I think I can do better than that. I think I can do something like the shins where they're self-contained and you basically put the whole piece of armour on in one go rather than putting a strapping system on and then attaching the pieces to it. Um, so basically I'm going to start with one arm and that's the reason I haven't continued with the hands. I'm going to work on the arm, work out what I can put through the arm once it's finished on my hand, probably that glove with the parts attached, maybe with the fingers attached, or maybe I have a machine that puts the whole glove on at the other end by holding the opening out so that my hand slips into it and then the finger sections are just glued onto the fabric and then the palm is fixed on by a machine. So let's have a look at the arm and I'll describe what I'm planning. So currently I haven't done any strapping system for the arm and um, there's the remains of another previous strapping system which had a hook mechanism. Um, basically I've just got a bit of velcro there and at the moment that's fitted to uh, what I did make of the exoskeleton strapping system which is just some aluminium with rivets and that's got a velcro strap. Then the intention was there's a piece there to mount the shoulder bell. So what I'd really like to do is basically make the arms in the same way that I made the shins stroke boots. So that basically they're self-supporting pieces of armour that clamp your arm and hold themselves in place instead of being held up by um, the shoulder. So I think what I need to do, if you've seen the movie Iron Man, you probably have, um, when the machine puts the suit onto Tony, you'll notice the arms, at least the forearms, possibly the biceps, are split in two at each side. And they kind of open up on a kind of on a scissor movement, and then he puts his arms in, and you know, the, the suit comes down and clamps him and holds itself in place. So at the moment I've got these rather crude hinges, which are basically um, some hot glue and a nut stuck in this piece, and then a bolt, which is too long and needs cutting off. So I need to build a chassis that goes underneath this piece, which has the elbow hinge. The, bi the uh, biceps are gonna stay in one piece, I think. So you can put the bicep on and you can put on the open forearm and then it basically clamps shut. Now I'd like to use a motor to pull that shut, but we'll see how that goes. At least you could push it shut or the machine could push it shut and then it will latch shut until you release it. And it will clamp your arm so that basically that forearm is held in place in the right place and then the bicep doesn't need any support to hold itself up, rather like the shins. So the next part after that would be to have the shoulder bell attached as well. And I think that's gonna happen with some sort of sprung hinge mechanism mounted to the top of the bicep. So basically the entire arm is independent from the body, which means you can shift your shoulder up and down and there's no actual latch onto the shoulder piece of the torso. So the next video will be me working on the arms. So I'm gonna be cutting these in half making a metal and 3D printed chassis for each forearm, working out the proper hinge. And when I've got that working, then I'll be coming back to do the last part of the hands, because at that point, I'll know what I can put through here on my hand already. And I'll also have some mechanism that clamps this onto the arm, and I'll have a feel for basically how a machine can put the fingers on. They're probably gonna be attached to the glove, but as I say, I might have a mechanism for putting the glove on as you put your hand in, all mounted on an arm suiting up machine for each hand. 
So that's all for this time. See you next time.